Hello there and welcome back for another Hedros video. So if you're just uh, new to the channel and there's been lots of new sus subscribers so welcome everyone thank you very much for subscribing if you're new this is a digital kit that I made called Wild Hedgerows it's in my Etsy store and I'm showing you how I'm creating from each of the pages uh, I won't be covering all of the pages but I'll, I'll cover as many as I can um, and this is the page that I'm going to be working with today all right, so I'm going to put that to one side because I'm also going to be utilising some of this green paper, which I showed you in a previous video. I think I called it painter's tape, but um, it's painter's masking paper. I've actually put it in my um, Amazon shop. The affiliate link is down in the description box down below. Um, and it's a big roll. I think you get about 50 metres. Um, but if you're living in a foreign country, foreign to the UK, then what you can do is you can go and have a look at the product and go and see what it is and then go and search for it on Amazon.com um, so that you can find it in your own country. All right. But that's what this is, painter's paper. I'm also going to be using some scraps of file folders. Uh, so I'm going to be using those. And I've got some scraps of coffee dyed papers and also some tea dyed papers in case these aren't big enough for what I want to use. Now, I want to show you this is the um, journal that I'm going to be using. All right. So I've made up uh, two covers uh, and I'll be talking about this more, uh, the paper in the live video that I'm going to be doing on Friday evening where I show the pop-up shop products that I'm going to be selling in my pop-up shop on my Facebook group. Uh, it's once a month and this next one which runs this weekend is the penultimate one. Now I'll talk to you more about, the pen be about it being the penultimate one um, on Friday night. But I just wanted to show you the paper and this is wallpaper. OK, and I will be showing another video showing how to make up these journal covers. All right. And I'll go more in depth into those. Now, the reason why I'm showing you this is because I want to show you some of the papers because today's video I want to add a couple of the items that I'm making actually into the journal itself. So I'm just going to quickly flip through um, and you'll see some things that are part done um, and not quite completed yet. But I will go through that when I come to show you the video on how I've made these covers and how I'm going to decorate the front and, and yeah bits and bats like that so I've got some I've got pocket here and then I've got some book pages that's the page that I made was that the second or the third video I can't remember now um, some plain green paper these are from the really useful uh, delicate background papers and I've got two of them printed off and I'm going to stitch those together then I've got glassine bag, coffee dyed paper, some more really useful background papers that I'm using as tags, some watercolour paper, a coffee dyed, another book page, another tea dyed paper. This was from an old digital kit called Lace. Um, I'm just in the process of revamping that one, but that will be up in the Etsy store soon. Another book page some lightly coloured coffee dyed paper that is as I say is going to be stitched down or stuck down at least onto the pages so it creates a pocket and I'm leaving these pages loose in here so that I can pull them out do any stitching on them that I want to do do any stenciling on them um, so like on these I'm going to add some paper napkin uh, obviously stitch these two pages together but you get a bit of an idea 
of the pages that I've got inside this journal and that's what I'm going to be using these items are, are going to go in this journal right so that's the box of the items that we've made so far I've cut out all the elements from the page now I'm just going to put those two to one side for now because um, I want to work with these butterflies so I've cut them out and I've inked them all up and I'm going to use my scrappy bit of file folder as well I'm going to make little mini notebooks with these now I've got off to the side here some book pages that I've watercolored um, splodge some ink on and I will be doing a video on these as well and I want these as a little bit of a background let's try that one with that one yeah that looks good okay so let's glue this in place glue around the four sides and a bit in the middle for good luck And then I'm just going to leave a little bit of a border around that. And then I'm going to cut this out. So for those of you that purchased the last mystery box from the pop-up shop last month, you had a selection of these that uh, myself and my granddaughter made. So you've got a selection of those in your box. So you might want to take a look at those. And then I'm going to glue that then onto the file folder. All right, so I'm going to stick that on there. And again, I'm just going to leave a little bit of a border around it. And then I want to do, let's do that one. So I'm just going to make two in the video. And then you can get the gist of sort of what's what. Let's put it at that end. this out and ink around the edges but I'm not going to do this edge for a minute Right, I'm not going to get my big cumbersome uh, board out for scoring, so I'm just going to use my ruler for now. I just want to score with an equal border as what's around the, the three sides. And then I can trim off that bit of excess there at the bottom, which is why I didn't ink up that bottom edge. And then I can do the fold, front and back. Open that up. One. And then I've got two little 
little covers for little mini notebooks I am going to have to use my tea dyed paper across that way down that way Use the edge of the card again as a bit of a guide. So all our pages need to be that big. Three pages. Now, if my pages end up being a little bit bigger than the notebook, I'm not fussed about that. Just adds a bit more character to it. Find the middle. And I'm just going to tie them in place with some of this. Now, is it baker's twine, butcher's twine? I never know which profession it belongs to. I'm just going to tie them in place because I think that I can then either add more pages to it or remove the ones that I no longer need. So I'm just doing a double knot by going through the same loop twice. Pull it in. Squizzers. Trim off the excess. And Bob's your uncle, Fanny's your aunt. There we go. One little notebook done. Where's the other one gone? Oh, it's there. <laughs> Couldn't see for looking. Okay, same process. Open it up. Line it up with the edge and just take it slightly over and slightly down. And now I've got a guide as to how long my papers need to be. Put the cover on. Right, so I've tied an initial first knot, keeping my finger on there. I'm going through the next loop twice. Once, twice, pull it in tight. Okay, so those are my two little booklets now done with the pages inside. The next step that I want to do for these is I want to make a little bar, like a little belly band for them to sit over the top of. So in my journal, I've decided to use this page. So what I'm going to do is I want to use the ornamental alphabet card. 
and I'm going to use some far folder. Now I don't normally decorate my pages up with all the elements, but I want this in place um, before I actually put all the pages together. Now I've got this piece of file folder again. It's already got a little fold in it, so I'm going to use that. And I'm just going to work out how wide it needs to be. So that's the page fold there. Now I don't want it to go right the way up to the page fold because it's all going to be stitched in place and all the other pages are going to sit on top. So I actually want it shorter than that. All right. So I'm going to fold it about about there. So I don't know whether you can see there's the fold that I've just pinched and there's the, where the edge of the paper would be. All right. So we're going to go with that, that little pinched area there. I'm going to fold that over. Burnish that down. I'm going to cut off the excess, but I'm going to leave a little bit beyond those two fold lines. So let's just check that those flaps are now folded in and that's going to sit comfortably on the page there and it's not going to interfere with this folded section of the page once it becomes part of the signature. All right, next thing is I want to cut this up. Um, I won't risk cutting it freehand. So I'm going to use a part of the alphabet. Because <coughs> this is going to decorate up the front of that bit of file folder. Out you come. Thank you. I'm going to trim it there. Okay. So I want to see how wide I need it. So if I, if I do F, it's going to take it beyond. So I'm going to do A, B, C, D, E. So let's cut that little bit of excess off. Ink that up. And then I'm going to glue this down onto here. that can now sit on my page but what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn it over and I'm going to trim these down a little because they are rather large trim them down and taper so that you don't see the corners of the folded card. And then I'm going to put some glue on those two flaps. I'm going to stick that down there. I 
and then I'll make another one using another part of the alphabet and I'll put that further down. I'm going to have to be careful with this because obviously that glue hasn't dried off yet but the idea is is that I'll fold all the pages to the back and then that should slide under there and then my little butterfly notebook will sit on top and it means that when I pull that little notebook out let's just see if I can do it carefully then I'm left with a little bit of a decorative piece on the edge of the page as well all right I just wanted to quickly show you a couple of other things before I call this one done and dusted. I cut out the word ornamental from the top of the alphabet card and I just folded, you can see here, I just folded the top edge over and glued that down and then put glue on the back of here and glued it onto the page and then on the other side I just got one of my Tim Holtz number stamps and I just stamped the number on the back there. Now the other thing is this paper can be quite delicate, book pages can be quite delicate. So I'm just going to use my invisible tape. That's way too much Carol, but hey ho. And I'm just going to sit it over that fold. Trim off the excess. And then I'm just going to rub it with my finger, but I could use my bone folder. And it now practically disappears. You shouldn't see you can see it there look in the way that I'm tilting it in the sun but when you actually look at the page you can't really see it and it just helps to protect that fold line there when you come to stitching it in now this is what it'll look like in the journal Hang on. I don't want you going in that pocket thank you so it'll be like that open it up and then you'll get those two little mini butterfly notebooks now I'm going to take those out because I'll add them once I've stitched the signature in place okay but at least those bits are now in situ ready for me to use I've got this card um, and I'm going to make a quick tag out of it so I'm just going to cut the corners off at the top, flip that over, and I've chosen another splodgy uh, book page, and I'm going to sit that on the top there. Okay, so we'll glue that in place. But I might just glue it round the three sides and have a hang on a minute. Forgot to ink it up. I don't always have to ink everything. But it does just give it a lovely finished edge. And it helps to define the two pieces of paper. So that one will stand out from the other. Now try again, Carol. We're going to glue around there. There. This is Yorkshire for there. I'm going to glue it there or there. And this edge. And down there. Love this, the way that those colours have come together. So I'm just going to glue that like that, like that, and like that. Just the right size, look. And 
and I've now got this lovely, uh, when it's glued down, a lovely opening just there as a bit of a secret pocket. Uh, rip it, cut it, cut it because the other sides are all straight. Sorry, I'm just talking to myself. <laughs> Minute. Okay, off at an angle. There we go. And then I want to use some of this. And I'm going to glue that on the back because otherwise you'll be looking at that. So I'm going to glue this on the back. So I'm just going to trim it off. If I turn it over, run my hand over that, doesn't make a noise. If I screw it up and then unscrew it, see how it makes a nice crinkly noise. Okay, now what I'm going to do is uh, I want to just ink up that top edge. And I'm going to put glue around three sides. Just up to where I've cut the tapers on the tag. And stick that down. I'll just have to hold on to it for a minute. This top edge is now loose, All right? And I'm going to cut it to the same size as the book paper. and just glue that little bit there fold that over and I've now got a little pocket on the back and it makes a lovely crinkly sound. What I might do is I might stitch around some of this. I might stitch on the book page around the three sides and then obviously I'll put a punch in and add some uh, seam binding to the top of that. But there you go, one pretty simple little tag. Okay, so that's the items that I'm sharing with you today. I hope that you'll join me on the live on Friday evening, tomorrow, um, so that you can see what's going to be available in the pop-up shop um, on my Facebook group. And thank you so much for joining me again today. And I hope it's given you a little bit of inspiration for something a little bit different. Okay, thanks for joining me. See you again in the next video. Bye for now. <laughs>